Well, will Brisbane 2032 be known as the Digital Games? That's what a panel of experts are debating this morning in the city. Hosted by the Australian Information Industry Association, it all gets underway at Deloitte at 7.30 and the facilitator is this man, Professor Michael Roseman. He's the Director of the Centre for Future Enterprise at QUT. Morning, Michael. Good morning, Spencer. I hope you're well. well. I am indeed, and I hope you are. What's meant by the digital games? What do you mean by that? So digital, of course, is the new hammer that we have. And it's not just about the digital experience at the Olympics, but it's also about using digital technologies in the lead-up to the Olympics, meaning digital as part of the construction and as part of the engineering that is needed for enter a new infrastructure. So we, we've heard a lot about, and I guess our minds go to the venues, the sporting venues that, that need to be built or transformed for the Games, and I guess maybe the public transport infrastructure after that. But just give us a sense of the, the sort of digital infrastructure that will be needed and that we might see. So you're right. So there's sport infrastructure, there's transport infrastructure. There will be an Olympic village, as we all know, for up to 15,000 athletes that is, that is needed. So digital infrastructure will mean that you create a digital twin, a visualization that is highly intuitive, and that allows the different parties to share data. So someone might build a road, someone else has to position a crane, maintenance needs to be discussed, or traffic needs to be simulated. And all of this will happen in one integrated digital platform. And so who's going to do all this? It sounds like opportunities are plenty for the private sector, is it? Correct. I mean, of course, you have government involved, state and federal government, you have the private sector involved, you hopefully have a lot of niche entrepreneurial vendors involved. So this is a rich opportunity uh, if we can come together smartly. It all goes to show how far reaching an event like the Olympics can be, doesn't it? Again, it's not just about the sport and this infrastructure is, is to live on beyond 2032. Indeed, I think Brisbane 2033 is what we have to have in mind. And Brisbane has an opportunity not just to showcase athletes, but also the tremendous engineering and construction talent we have in town. Opportunity is is one thing, Michael. But on the flip side, what are some of the challenges that that hosting an event as big as the Olympics might be? Because I know that's something you guys are going to get into this morning as well. So digital literacy, of course, is a challenge. If you think about the Olympics will be in 11 years, well, 11 years from here, iPad and Instagram came out. So 11 years in the digital age is a tremendously long time. The world will change in front of our eyes. The challenge will be, can we build the digital literacy, the digital skills um, that is needed to capitalize on all of these opportunities? What's going to be the secret to a financially successful games, do you think? Because the one thing that I reckon people are worried about is the potential for us to lose a lot of money. And if you look back over the last 40 years, it's roughly 50-50 whether an Olympics is profitable or ends up costing a fortune. Now, you're the director for the Centre for Future Enterprise, so this is right up up your tree. How do we make sure we don't lose money on the Olympics? So you're right. I mean, digitisation creates a new experience, uh, but digitisation also has an opportunity to tremendously cut costs. If you can anticipate, let's say, how Brisbane might look like, how a road might look like, where you can smartly position a crane so you don't have to move it uh, at all, that will be massive cost reduction. So, yes, uh, well, I think we are lucky with the infrastructure we have already, but for this uh, infrastructure that further needs to be built, digitization will also allow us to dramatically cut costs. And this, this is why I also think that the digital games we envisage will be hopefully extremely cost-effective games. Mm, all right. The Deputy Mayor, Krista Adams, is your keynote speaker this morning. Any, um, like, can we expect any big announcements from her? Any idea what she's going to be saying? Um, she, as you, as you know, is chairing a, a committee where we bring together within the Brisbane City Council um, economic development opportunities. And she most likely will talk about the responsibilities and the opportunities of the committee, and most likely about how uh, small and medium-sized enterprises here in Brisbane and Queensland can engage early on in this conversation. All right, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of it. It's happening live in the city. It's also being streamed online, so if you go to Eventbrite, you can get yourself a ticket and watch it online. Can you watch it back later, Michael? Uh, as far as I know, it will be recorded, so most definitely you can watch it. Uh, there's also the entire consortium, so this is the first, but by now means the last conversation and in the next... Uh, months and years there will be very similar oh, yeah. events coming up excellent stuff lots to talk about make sure we get it right thanks for your time this morning i'll let you get to it thanks benson take care professor michael roseman director of the center for future enterprise at qut and he's uh, he's facilitating this discussion this morning in brisbane asking the question will brisbane 2032 be known as the digital games